Hi, everyone. How are you this evening? My name is Good. Kelly Greenley. I am the Community Outreach Librarian at Prince Memorial Library. It's very good to see so many people here today to learn about a very important topic uh, for all of us. Um, I know that I have so many questions that um, I'm hoping will be answered tonight. So um, uh, I think this is gonna be a very interesting presentation. So <clears throat> allow me to introduce um, tonight's speaker, Katrina, is an environmental educator at EcoMaine. She has worked there, I'm told, just now for six years. <laughs> she happened to mention that in conversation, so I thought I would add it to my little bio information. Um, she's worked there for six years. She is responsible for designing curricula, on-site tour programs, as well as other education and outreach programming that, that facilitates engaged waste reduction among residents, schools, and businesses in EcoMaine's 70 plus member communities. Um, tonight's format, I should have mentioned this before I introduced Katrina. So tonight's format, Katrina has um, some slides to show us. She has some great information for us. Um, and uh, if you do have questions, we ask that you hold them till the end and we'll be happy, to, uh, she, Katrina will be happy to answer questions. Um, and if you're feeling um, uncomfortable with asking the question live, you can certainly add it to the chat and I can ask it for you as you wish. Um, so without further ado, I pass the wand to Katrina. Well, hi everyone. I'm really pleased that you chose to spend a little time here tonight. Um, I'm gonna share my screen with you and we'll be off and away. Um, just on the off chance anyone does need to leave early, um, I'm going to share the information, the uh, the um, email that you can send any additional questions to. It's info at ecomain.org, I-N-F-O at E-C-O-M-A-I-N-E.org. Um, you can also always give my my um, office line a, a jingle. It's 523-3141. Um, but yeah, uh, email is, is great too. Um and I am so happy to answer questions at the end and any additional questions that you might have um, can be sent to the email too. But anyway, let's get started. Uh, so Eagle Maine, where, you know, what, what are we even talking about tonight? Trash, all the trash. Where does your trash and recycling go? What happens to it? And oh, so much more is what we're gonna cover tonight. Um, most of us don't think about what we're throwing away once it leaves our house or even leaves you know, our hand to hit the trash can. Um, and so we're going to dive into it a little bit tonight. So EcoMaine is down in the Portland area. Uh, we are around the corner from the Portland airport. We are a nonprofit, nonprofit facility. Um, there are very few nonprofit um, waste management com um, companies in the entire U.S., if not the world. So I think we're pretty, pretty unique in that area. Cumberland and North Yarmouth and actually the entire surrounding area, those towns actually all came together to start us back in the 70s. We used to be called Regional Waste Systems and we changed our name to EcoMaine in 2007 when we started single sort recycling in this building. Before all that happened, the, the recycling part, we actually used this building to smush your trash together if you happen to live here back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, we would smush the trash together and then send that to the landfill which is right here, but now we call it the ash fill because what we're putting in there is ash from the waste to energy facility. And this is where your trash goes to burn and make electricity. We'll talk about that in the second half of the program. And these days your recycling comes to this building. It's sorted out into all different ways um, from the time it gets dumped on the floor and then shoved up onto the co um, conveyor belt. Your recycling takes about two minutes or less to be sorted. It's going to take me a little bit longer than that to talk you through the process, but it's really interesting. The last picture I have here is food waste. We do have a food waste bunker or storage area inside the tipping hall of the waste energy building. Um, and we do get a bit of food waste from towns and schools and businesses there. That food waste happens to go up to Exeter, Maine to be anaerobically digested, which is a really fun process, uh, which is the process of mixing um, food waste with cow manure in like a, a nice big slurry, which sounds really gross, but it's incredibly cool, scientifically speaking. Um, and that process yields electricity, fertilizer, and animal bedding for the cows that live on the farm um, 
So very cool closed loop process, but also composting, which is the, of course, the other way to, to reuse and recycle your food is amazing too. So we'll talk about that as well. That's just a little background on what we're, uh, where we're going tonight. Um, and speaking of where we're going, you are all up in this area, unless you're you know, from somewhere else, which is great too. I'm just happy to, to have anyone and everyone in this program. Uh, but all these white dots here are our member towns or associate member towns or contract member towns, which means they send us trash, recycling, or both. Um, the Cumberland, North Yarmouth area and all of the towns, hard to see, um, but the green guys, those are all trash and recycling towns. Um, and the other ones are either trash or recycling or both as well. Not a, a really uh, big point, but just interesting to know that we take trash and or recycling from about 450,000 people in the main area, as well as two little towns um, over the border of New Hampshire. Let's get familiar with your trash now. What in the world are we throwing away? Well, in our trash can every day, Hopefully we just have trash, trash items, everything from dog poo bags to maybe diapers, maybe some insulin needles, maybe some, you know, six pack rings, if those are still around, straws, chip bags, other non-recyclable packaging. But for the most part, we can section off the usable things. So, you know, do you have books you don't need anymore, clothes you don't wear anymore? Your kids have toys, grandkids have toys, etc. Anything that you don't want, even like a, a bunch of kitchen stuff. I purged my kitchen the other day and I was like, well, I could throw this away, but that would be a huge waste. So I put it in a pile uh, for both um, Buy Nothing, my, my Portland Buy Nothing group, and I posted it there. But also, you know, whoever doesn't want anything there could also go to Goodwill, Salvation Army, you name it. It could, uh, it could be used by someone else. We also don't want in your trash can your organics. Garbage to Garden is great. Uh, they are up in their, your area and they have a local pickup service. I will show you a map later because maybe you happen to live or, wor uh, or work um, or maybe you live near Portland or South Portland. There's actually 10 drop-off locations between Portland and South Portland that are free to drop off your food scraps in. So if you happen to not have composting at your house and you don't want to pay for it, this subscription, there are 10 options for you if you happen to want those. Um, again, I'll show you those two maps a little bit later. And then, of course, I don't want your recycling in your trash can. Uh, you have a wonderful service up there um, that Deer Town actually helped start that is single sort recycling. You put the cardboard with the paper, with the glass, with the metal, with the plastics in there. And from there, it gets picked up at your house um, and it gets taken to us um, and we sort it out for you. So we want your trash, definitely, but we'd really like your useful items, organics and recycling to be out of it and elsewhere. So of course, please reduce then reuse. Here's some fun little pictures here. You know, we can't all do everything, but we can all do something. I totally get, even I don't get, even I don't have solar panels on my house. Even I don't have an electric car, but you know, I bring my own bags and I use glass jars and I don't use plastic bags and I don't, you know, I, I use a reusable metal straw. So there's, there's things that I can do and there's some things that I can't and that's okay. We all just kind of have to do the best that we can and um, you know, pick our battles and, uh, and, and try and reduce, reuse, recycle compost um, and really kind of tread lightly on the earth because we're not the only people who live here. And let's think about a little more globally, you know, the kind of the, pla the, the problem with uh, cardboard and paper here is we have to get that stuff from trees. If we recycle it, we have to cut down less trees or we get to cut down less trees. We need to cut down less trees. So that's actually a super win-win for the economy and the environment and the people who happen to live around these um, forests that are, are cut down. So, you know, can we make smarter choices when it comes to what we buy and what we use as well? Of course, try and reduce and reuse and recycle everything you can, but then also voting with our dollar, buying things like recycled paper uh, copy paper or recycled paper notebooks or even recycled paper toilet paper, which sounds crazy, but it's actually one of my favorite things to talk about. Think about cutting down trees to make toilet paper, like say Charmin does, or uh, taking paper and turning it into uh, toilet paper, um, like a lot of companies do um, that have recycled paper, toilet paper, which is really great. So um, making sure we're making the right choices here. This is the problem with metals. When we want to get metals out of the earth, we have to strip mine. These are were beautiful mountains in Utah. And now, wow, look at this mine all the way down to the bottom. Water is being contaminated with metals um, and ores, uh, you know, not safe to drink for the animals or any people around there. And if we put this stuff in the recycling bin, 
it will get recycled and turn into something new and wonderful again. So we don't have to do this as much. Of course, also try and cut down on what we use and what we buy. You know, do you need uh, blank? If you don't, try not to use it or try, you know, try to get it used somewhere as well. Um, I'm actually on the hunt for a coffee table which seems kind of random, but I was thinking, well, I could buy from West Elm. I could buy from, uh, you know, any number of, of, of stores, a brand new, wonderful table, or I could find it used. So can we try and get used things no matter what they are? Um, and this is the problem with plastics. You and I use plastics every day, which is great. I've got a plastic water bottle sitting right next to me. I randomly have one of my daughter's spoons sitting right next to me made of plastic. Um, but, you know, making smart choices with our plastics. Do we need blank? If you do, great, get it. If you don't, try and reuse or reduce as well. Um, but, you know, when it comes to making plastics, there are fires that happen at refineries. Of course, there are um, oil spills out in the ocean. Um, uh, and then, of course, microplastics. This, this has uh, become a really huge thing in the last couple of years where there's all this plastic in the ocean, which is tiny, you know, breaking down into teeny tiny things. And then the fish are eating it and the whales are eating it and, you know, the birds are eating it. And we are, are of course, eating it when we consume the, the fish as well. So um, trying to trying to think about that when we're consuming um, anything. So let's bring it back to, you know, what we can do every day. What should I recycle? Oh, so many things. There are so many things you can't recycle, but oh, so many things you can recycle. And the typical things are cardboard boxes and paper, metal, glass, and plastic. I'm going to go through it a little more detail here. The paper yeses are almost everything. Really anything from your chicken and broth and, and uh, wine in a box, soup in a box, all those boxes things, um, lemonade in a box, milk in a box, all these are wonderfully recyclable. In the paper pulping process, if there's any linings in there, that'll actually be skimmed away. So I get the question a lot, oh, well, there's a lining inside of it. I know, I, I don't think I can recycle it. You can, because it will actually get skimmed away. Technologies are really great now, um, and a lot of things are recyclable, whereas they didn't used to be. We'll take all your everything, newspapers, junk mail, not that we have phone books anymore, but you know, any books even, say you had um, some books in a box in the basement and it got moldy. You know, as long as those books aren't still wet, we can recycle those because of course, no one's gonna wanna take those to Goodwill, they're ruined, or maybe your dog happens to eat the cover off of a book, which has definitely happened in my house before. Nobody wants to have that book at Goodwill or a yard sale, but I could, I recycled that book. so. You know, there's definitely a lot of paper that we can uh, recycle here. One important note is that we will accept your shredded paper, but it needs to be in a clear plastic bag. And the reason for that is if you put your shredded paper in your recycling bin loose, it's confetti. It's in with the glass, it's in with the metals, it's in with the plastic, it's everywhere. If you put it in a clear plastic bag, we can see that there's shredded paper in there and it gets thrown downstairs and then opened and shaken out in the paper area right before it goes to get bailed. If you give us your uh, shredded paper in a black bag, brown bag, purple bag, doesn't matter what color bag, we can't see it, we think it's trash, we throw it away. We are long past the point of opening bags to say, oh look, it's actually recyclable, or oh look, there's dog poo everywhere. So <laughs> definitely give us the right stuff, and if you choose to give us your shredded paper, great, but it must be in a clear plastic bag. Another point to make is that we get asked a lot, what about pizza boxes? It's got grease and stuff on it. Well, if it's super duper greasy, cut around or tear around that greasy part. You can compost that part and you can recycle everything else. If there just happens to be a couple spots here and there, that's totally fine to recycle the whole thing. It does not have to be pristine clean to be recycled. Paper nose include wax paper, soiled paper, paper towels, nose tissues, and toilet paper. Hopefully the toilet paper is an obvious one, but really everything else is that the fibers that make up those types of papers are not long enough to then go off and create a new piece of paper. So you could compost your paper towels, your tissues, even your napkins. Um, uh, those are all totally compostable. You can even compost wax paper, um, but your toilet paper just needs to go on the toilet, please. The metals that you and I use every day are ferrous or non-ferrous, and that um, really depends on how they are removed later on in the process, but that doesn't matter to you at home. Uh, what matters to you at home is that we can recycle everything from your um, pineapple cans, your spaghetti sauce cans, your cat food, dog food cans, your hairspray, your room spray, your uh, cooking spray, uh, your aluminum foil, your pie plates, and even like the tops of your... Um, 
spaghetti sauce and salsa, et cetera. The types of things that we cannot take as far as metal goes are basically large, bulky, scary things. We've had saw blades fly out at um, and almost hurt workers before, those are no. We've had tiny screws fall out of trucks and um, bales. And actually there's one in our electric car right now, uh, which is gonna cost us a new tire soon. So um, no on the tiny things. We don't want items with like Freon in them. We certainly can't take giant things like um, refrigerators in our recycling facility. Stuff like that can go to Riverside Recycling. They have a great metals bin there. And we certainly don't want like large, scary, pipes. There was once upon a time a couple of years ago where we got uh, a pipe and it tore a belt in half. And then two weeks later, we got another pipe that tore another belt in half. And each incident was around $10,000. So that was a huge loss monetary wise. Um, but luckily nobody actually got hurt. So that was, that was good. Um, as far as glass go, we will take your glass, uh, but we don't want everything. So we'll take your glass containers. Lids are great. You can keep the lids on or you can take them off. If you take them off, of course, you can put them in the recycling bin too. If you leave them on, that's fine. There is no problem with leaving them on or taking them off. If you do take them off, just pop them in the recycling bin too. The types of glass that we may not accept uh, are anything from like your car window glass, your house window glass, ceramics are not glass, mirrors are not the kind of glass we take, and then uh, light bulbs of any kind we do not accept in your recycling bin. These types, they have mercury in them, and they are safe and, and, and good to go back to Lowe's and Home Depot and some other places. You can search earth911.com. It's got a great resource where you can search a lot of different items to say, where do I take my batteries? Where do I take my light bulbs? Where do I take blank? So earth911.com, great resource. Plastics are often very confusing for folks, which is okay. Uh, we will accept your rigid containers labeled one through seven. Let's break that down. Rigid means it's not a chip bag that I can crush in my hand. You could take this, um, this little guy here and you could squeeze that raspberry container, but you couldn't crush it in your hand unless you were the Incredible Hulk. Um, so that is a rigid container, even though it does have some give, that's great. We want your containers. We don't want your straws. Straws are not containers. Pens are not containers. Um, all kinds of stuff we, we get that are just not acceptable. And then it has to be labeled one through seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven are the types of plastic that we take, which is incredible. We just can't take everything. Um, so, you know, no bags, no films. And by films, I mean anything squishy. And we'll talk, I'll show you about uh, what that is in a second. Um, to hammer this, this point home, because again, this is very confusing, it needs to have this kind of symbol with a one through seven in there. It's got to be rigid. It's got to be a container. The types of plastic we can't take are anything with, um, we, can, we can't take any bagged anything. So nothing bagged except, remember back to my shredded paper comment, that's the one exception there. No pet food bags, no wood pellet bags, no shopping bags, no styrofoam, no bubble wrap, no chip bags, etc. Plasticfilmrecycling.org is a wonderful tool then for you. Uh, so put that in your memory, plasticfilmrecycling.org. You can take all of these filmy, squishy bags and films like bubble wrap um, to Hannaford, Shaw's, Target, Walmart, Kohl's, et cetera. So plasticfilmrecycling.org, type in your zip code no matter where you are and you can get the answer to where to take these films. Not in your recycling bin, please though. Other non-recyclables include things like your clothing and your shoes, your food, your electronics, your scary liquids or any liquids at all. Batteries have and will start fires in our building, so please no. Propane tanks have and will start fires and explosions on our building, so please no. Uh, no chainsaws, yes, we've gotten those, nothing sharp. More no's include anything pillows or uh, textiles. We have gotten a couple snakes, I don't know why, uh, but none of those, no tarps, hoses, ropes, uh, ammunition, chains, etc. Seems like I'm saying no to some crazy things, but I'm saying it because we've gotten all of these things. All right, now let's get into it. How does recycling work? Well, it's either picked up at your house or perhaps you even have to take it to say Riverside Recycling or another transfer station nearby to you. Either way, those trucks drive to our building, Eco Main, right by the Portland Airport, and now it's our turn <laughs> to get things moving. So the trucks drop off and then the front loader pushes it up onto the conveyor belt to go through our building. And remember how I said it takes two minutes or less? It's gonna take me a little bit longer. But what happens is it goes up a conveyor belt down into this kind of, um, I call it a trough, but it's not a trough, just this open area where the 
material goes over these rubber stars spinning on axles. So the stars are spinning and large things go up and over them. You don't see things like milk jugs or pieces of paper because they've already fallen through and gone on a different um, way. This is where everything else goes. So remember, we took the paper, or sorry, we took the cardboard and it went over the stars, everything else fell through, and it's now going right here, what we're looking at right now. These are the paper sorting stars. They are made out of rubber, they are spinning on axles, but there's 300 of them here, whereas there's probably, I don't know, 30 in the cardboard sorting area. And what's happening here is the cardboard is, or sorry, the paper is being pushed up and up and up and over, so up and over. You can see that mechanism here. It's pushing the paper up and over. And where does the glass metal and plastic go? It's actually fallen through the cracks to go a different way. Remember my friends, the plastic bags are and tanglers, which could be anything from the shirt you see here to the tinsel you see here to the colorful ribbons you see here and the bag, 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 bags everywhere are terrible. So please, once again, plasticfilmrecycling.org is your new best friend. We've taken out the cardboard, we've taken out the metal. Now we're taking out the metal with our two types of magnets. We took out our paper with stars, our cardboard with stars, and now the metal's being removed by magnets. Those two different types of magnets are removing ferrous and non-ferrous. This is here is your ferrous metal being grabbed and brought over here and then thrown in a bin. Grabbed and thrown, grabbed and thrown, grabbed and thrown all day long. Your non-ferrous metals are being repelled or pushed away so it comes over here so look at anything flying over here that is your non-ferrous metal being repelled by a reverse eddy current magnet say that three times fast the reverse eddy current magnet is repelling all the non-ferrous metals away from that magnet and everything else is falling down this way the glass is smashed up it's not recycled it is reused there's not really a um a market for glass these days, unfortunately. No one's taking it for free. No one's taking it for um, and paying us for it to make new glass. So what we do again is we smash it and then make everything from new countertops to new um, construction building projects underneath uh, driveways, underneath parking garages, underneath grocery stores, you know, whatever they're building, it's a great filler. And it's also a great pothole filler. So it's reuse. Everything else though is recycled. The plastics, the number one type have a different um, chemical makeup, the number two, different chemical makeup, the number three, four, five, et cetera. So what's happening here is <sighs> plastic is being blown up and over a little hump and everything else falls straight down to go into this room right here. So these people are sorting number two natural colored plastics, number two colored plastics, and number three, four, five, six, seven. So your seven different type of types of plastic are actually sorted into four different ways. And do remember that all along the way, humans are removing all of the trash and throwing it away for you. Not a great job when it comes to taking recycling for upwards of 300,000 people. So please, please, please remember to give us the good stuff, the good recycling and not the bad stuff. Something called wish cycling is putting something in the recycling bin that you want it to be recycled, but it is only recyclable if we can actually turn around and recycle it. So once we have sorted everything, we bale it, squish it into giant rectangles, wrap it with wire, and then we inspect that bale to make sure that it's clean to put either in the pile to wait for the truck or to put right onto the truck to go to the next place. And I'll show you a map of where everything goes in just a moment. So Richard here, he's turning it over. He's going to look, he's going to pull every, anything out that he needs to, either by hand or with some help. And when he deems a bale acceptable, again, it will either go on a truck or into a pile in our bale yard. If we were to send off a big truckload of bales that were unacceptable, that were dirty, that would get sent back to us and then we would have to pay for that. So it really makes sense to only send off the good stuff. And of course, we again need your help here because we can't take everything that you give us if it's not recyclable. So give us only the good stuff, please. 
And I do stop this video right here because I want to point out that right in the background, that's where your trash goes. So the recycling building is right next door to where the trash goes. Just a fun fact. And where does everything else go? The recycling. Uh, your glass stays here in Maine to be reused as fill. Cardboard goes up to Quebec or it stays um, inside the country to New York and Massachusetts. Metals go right down to Pennsylvania. Plastic goes to Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Tennessee, Michigan, different places there. And your paper. Sometimes it goes overseas, sometimes it stays here in the US. Um, it really just varies on who's buying it those days. A lot of the times we hear, oh my God, China's not taking our plastics. What do we do? It's not being recycled anymore. Well, good news is EcoMain has never sent the plastics out of the country. So we are good there. We are sending it to respectable buyers here in the country, not overseas. So we don't have the problems with like shipping containers and things falling into the ocean and China's not taking it anymore. So um, we're very, very lucky to, to have this um, program here in the U.S. for our plastics. Now, what in the world could my recycling turn into if I put them in the recycling bin? That means if I put them in the right bin, it, your recycling can turn into playgrounds, toys, mats to wipe our feet on, clothing, water bottles, bicycle parts, car parts, even airplane parts, which is super cool. And then of course, uh, bags to get takeout food in and also groceries in. And then again, a little reminder, my favorite recycled paper, toilet paper, we all vote with our dollar. So try if you can to buy recycled items, recycled toys, recycled pa toilet paper, recycled bags, recycled products, et cetera. That really helps the economy go around too. Cause you know, what if nobody bought anything with recycled content in it? We couldn't, you know, recycling wouldn't be a thing. So always try and buy recycled content if possible. Now, that was recycling, that was a whirlwind, right? But hey, next up, food is not garbage. So if you can, please try and use this incredibly valuable resource. Um, I know you have garbage to garden up in your area. Uh, we compost it, might not be up in that area, but they are a wonderful company as well. I just like to mention them because they do the same thing, industrial composting for town, cities, um, businesses, restaurants, et cetera. There might be some drop-off sites near you. I'll show you maps of the closest ones that I know of in Portland and South Portland. Um, you might be able to do backyard composting, which is great, but I understand that not everyone has a backyard um, and not everyone wants to, to, to take the time to do that. And that's absolutely okay. There are other options for you. There's also something super cool called vermicomposting. That is composting with worms. Um, so very, very interesting process there. Um, so if you ever want a fun science project, uh, try that. Why should we compost? Well, it's estimated that about 40% of America's waste is organic material, meaning what is going into the trash cans, into the landfills, stuck in the ground forever, uh, not to grow again, but to be wasted um, is, is organic material or uh, um, you know, also called food waste or food scraps. And there's so many different ways that this happens. You know, it's not just you at your house. It's the processing of, um, of foods and the fats and oils and washing of things and the packaging of things and the discarded food in say restaurants and other institutions like hospitals. And then, um, you know, uh, food in our, coming off of our plate in our kitchens too. Um, it was estimated a, a couple of years ago in the main waste characterization study that uh, the average person contributes about 219 pounds of food to landfills annually. Um, if I were um, me on a scale, holding my daughter on a scale, that would be us together. That's us, you know, whole, whole, a uh, whole lot of food, a whole lot of weight being put into the ground and never used again. So, you know, we're filling up our landfills with, with food and organics. So why not try and compost that? And of course, reduce and reuse whenever we can too. Uh, one interesting note is that Again, your trash is actually combusted or burned at EcoMain. So the methane here is not being produced um, by your food if, uh, if your stuff comes to EcoMain because that, that, that uh, food is burned in the trash, which turns into ash and not methane. But again, it is filling up the landfill, even in a small part. So we really want to try and compost that if possible. Another slide on why food waste matters. If food waste were a country, it would be the third highest emitter of greenhouse gases in the world, which is crazy to think of. 
It's also an incredibly expensive waste of money. Um, and of course, you know, the, the saddest thing is that there are so many people that are food insecure, especially, you know, not especially in Maine, but, you know, in Maine as well, because of course, this is where we are. Um, so we really need to think about our, what we're buying at the grocery store, how we're storing it, how fast we're using it, um, and definitely make a plan for, for, you know, what we buy and how we use it and how we store it, because otherwise more things could be wasted that we don't need to. If you happen to be uh, in the Portland area, and I'll show you South Portland in a second, there, he, these are the drop-off locations. Um, I am very happy to make a PDF of this program available to you if you email me at info at ecomain.org. So these maps can be available to you as well. There's also, of course, information about the food waste drop-off locations on the Portland and the South Portland websites. Here's the South Portland ones. Um, again, five different locations. Um, and again, happy to make this available to you if you'd like, um, or check out the websites. What in the world can I compost in these industrial composting bins? Well, say in your backyard, you don't want to compost your meat because it might attract animals. You probably don't want to compost your dairy and yogurt uh, because it will probably attract critters, you know, that you don't want. Rats and raccoons and possums and things. Super cute, but not when they're like up close in your yard. So in the industrial composting programs, like Garbage to Garden, like we compost it, um, you could definitely put all this stuff because again, they are an industrial composting program. Their stuff gets so hot. Um, a fun uh, fact about Garbage to Garden is they actually took a whale off the beach that washed up a couple of years ago. And within, I don't know if it was weeks or months, all that was left of that whale was bones. So it's such a cool industrial composting process where the, it gets so hot that it re can really break down all this stuff. These are the kind of things that you don't and cannot put in compost bins, anything from pet waste to plastic bags, coffee cups, et cetera. Whew. Now, thinking about everything that we've talked about before we head to the trash part of our conversation, when we use something, let's just pretend a cereal box and a jug of milk. When we use that cereal box, that cereal box originally came from trees. We had to cut down trees to make that cereal box. To drink, uh, to, to eat the, the cereal with, with milk, we've got to um, drill for the oil. So we've extracted both the trees and the oil. We have transported them to refine um, or, or create uh, both of them. We have produced uh, the cereal box and the milk jug. We have sent it to the grocery store on trucks. That's a lot of uh, fossil fuels. You and I have consumed it, but uh-oh, you know, our cereal got stale um, and the milk went bad. Well, what if we just chuck those both in the trash? That would be a huge, huge uh, loss. Or we could make sure that we're using everything as uh, as needed, and we're recycling um, as we as we can, and composting any cereal, of course, or anything else. So always try and reduce, reuse, recycle, and compost first, because we've done all of this work to get stuff to you. It'd be a shame just to stuff it in the in the landfill. So whatever you don't reduce, reuse, recycle, or compost <laughs> ends up in our building. Again, right by the Portland airport, right next door to the recycling building, but this is your trash burning. It burns all day and all night. The trash uh, is, is constantly going 24 hours a day. The recycling building is open from around 7 a.m. to around 4 p.m., but the trash is burning all day, all night, all day, all night. What does it look like outside? Like this. You may have even seen our stack driving down 95. It's pretty obvious. Uh, but a lot of people don't even, you know, register what it is. Uh, it's just in the wintertime, it's just this tall thing with some steam coming out of it. So the trucks drive into this giant doorway, and this is what they see. Not gorgeous, but hey, it's where trash comes, so who cares? They back up, they drop off the trash, and you can see the claw here coming down. Uh, the, so um, this is the, um, the story of everything trash. You and I make it at home. It goes on a truck, it gets dumped off, a claw picks it up, that um, grapple puts it into the fire, which burns for four hours. So all of your trash is burning for four hours, turning it into ash. The ash goes to the landfill. Ballpark 200 trucks come in per day, ballpark 10 leave per day. So really vast reduction in size, volume, weight, etc. of your trash. It's no longer filling up the landfill in an incredible amount, it's now filling up the landfill in a much smaller amount. 
But that doesn't mean we don't need to reduce, reuse, or recycle compost. Our landfill is, is scheduled to fill up in the year 2045 or so. Um, so we really need to make sure that we're filling it up as slowly as possible. It costs millions of dollars to close a landfill and millions of dollars to open a new landfill. So why in the world would we, would we want to rush that process, right? So ash is one thing we're creating. That goes to the landfill. Another thing we're creating is electricity. So trash is burning. Fire is, of course, very hot. We've got a wall here and a wall here. Those walls happen to have pipes in them. The pipes have water inside them. The fire heats up the water, turns it into steam, which runs through a steam turbine generator to create electricity 24 hours a day, which is incredible. We power our trash building, we power our recycling building, we power our two electric cars, then we sell the rest to the grid. We only use about 85 to 90, or sorry, we only use about 10 to 15 percent of our uh, electricity that we create, so we send 85 to 90 to the grid, so that's pretty cool. We're um, powering up to 15,000 homes off of that electricity. The last thing we're creating is pollution, because anytime you burn a pile of leaves, to a pile of trash, you're going to make pollution. Luckily, this whole building is incredibly well, um, well, well built, well created. You know, a school building houses students, a grocery store houses um, groceries, and our waste to energy building is what takes trash and burns it and, and turns it into electricity and mitigates the pollution. So this whole building was created for this with the technology. How does it work? Number one, we're removing nitrogen oxides with something called urea. We psh, spray in the urea, mix it up with the nitrogen oxides, and that renders it safe and okay to then continue on to number two. Number two is where we're taking out the mercury and dioxin furans. We're psh, spraying in some activated carbon to absorb, sorry, adsorb, adsorb um, the, the molecules there and make sure they're no longer light, they're heavy and fall down here and now they're mixed with the bottom ash. This is called fly ash. Down here is called bottom ash. Gases continue on to number three, where we're removing acidic gases. Think way back to chemistry class. And when you have an acid plus a base and you put them in the right amounts, they neutralize, right? So we're spraying in something called lime slurry, a basic compound to remove the acidic compounds like sulfur dioxide. And then that renders them um, neutralized. So everything now goes through the electrostatic precipitator, which is my favorite two words to say, electrostatic precipitator. These are six giant curtains in each side. There's actually two fires, two pollution control systems, which means two electrostatic, electrostatic precipitators. And in these rooms, the curtains are actually charged and attracting the particulates. Particulates are things that you and I don't want to breathe in. We don't want to see them. They're the black yuck that's you know coming out of the stacks that where pollution is not being scrubbed. So we are actually scrubbing the air, scrubbing the gases, scrubbing the pollution to remove all those particulates. And then all those fall down again here and they go in with the ash and they go to the landfill. By the time we reach number five, we're, we're testing the pollution. We're making sure that everything is clean and safe to then go out our stack. By the time it reaches here, it's 96% water vapor. So we are making sure that everything is clean, 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 and safe to go outside. We are um, regulated by the EPA and the DEP, um, as well as some independent places. So we are making sure that we're really being safe for the environment. Here's just some videos and pictures of what's uh, what I've just talked about. This is where all the trash is held. Here's the claw or grapple that's picking it up from where it's pushed into this building. That's where the trash is, is dumping off. Here is a little video for you of the claw. It's picking up all the trash, about uh, two, three, four thousand pounds per grab is what it can get. Just depends on what's in that grab. These purple trash bags, that was Portland Trash Day, just for fun fact. And the claws bring, uh, being pulled up, up, up to the sixth floor. We actually have two claws. Remember, two claws, two fires, two pollution control systems, and one stack where the air leaves. So here it comes over to what I like to call the slide. And the trash is released. And then it very slowly goes down the slide, also called a hopper, and it slowly feeds down into the fire. Now, look closely. This 
is a cardboard box. This is a cardboard box. These should have gone to the recycling bin, but by now they're juicy and gross and nobody is touching anything in the trash building. Nobody is sorting anything in the trash building unless it's, they can see it and it's very unsafe. Like say a car battery would be very unsafe and they see it, they can pull that out, but really nothing else is being sorted. So if you happen to put your recycling in the trash, nobody's taking care of that for you, my friends. If you're putting your food in the trash, hoping it gets composted somewhere along the way, even in the landfill, it's supposed to break down. Nope, that doesn't happen either because nothing is breaking down in our landfill. Nothing's turning into soil in our landfill. That's also a common misconception because one, there's no light air or good bacteria in a landfill for stuff to break down, even if it was a whole, a whole landfill. But two, remember that we burn things. And so there's nothing to break down. It's ash at that point. So always try and put things where you need to put them instead of everything in the trash. Remember that the trash is turned into ash. Here's a picture of that. Metals are removed. Ferrous metals only are removed out of the ash if they happen to be in there. Think of like a box spring. No one's gonna open up that box spring and remove all those springs. So say you have a, a crummy box spring that you need to get rid of, you throw it in, um, in our building and we burn it. The box springs will actually be removed by this magnet. So that's great. Uh, but again, try, try, try to put uh, um, things where they need to go instead. 12 tons of metal or 24,000 pounds of metal is removed per 24 hours. So that's great, that's being recycled. And then the ash goes to the landfill. Remember that there's some pollution mixed up in here too. So we are lining that landfill oh so well, making sure the earth is safe. It's not just this plastic layer. It's like layers of sand and gravel and clay um, and plastic and just so many great layers, um, very thick. This is our landfill just a little bit farther away, just to give you a, a visual of what it looks like. So we are not um, creating methane in these landfills because again, it's ash, it's chemically inert. It's not emitting anything. We are creating electricity from our uh, trash uh, burning process. We are recovering or recycling our metals by removing them with the, uh, the magnets. And we're also saving emissions from not trucking our trash long distances. Um, there was a, a specific story that I'm remembering about New York and they put their trash on a train and then the train got stuck or something happened to it. And then this poor town that was nearby the train tracks would just overcome with this horrible stench of other people's trash. So that's not fair to anyone, is it? But the good news is that our landfill is three miles away from our trash building. So just down Congress Ave uh, or Congress Street, if you have been to Smiling Hill Farm, we're really a stone's throw away from there is where the landfill is. So um, all good things are happening here. Here's the alternative to what we do, waste to energy. Uh, this is what we call a whole trash landfill. We've got Juniper Ridge, we've got Augusta. Augusta is planned to close in uh, about five years. So again, no matter where you live, it's always important to reduce, reuse, recycle, and compost to cut down on the stuff going into the landfills. Um, you know, because landfills, they are spontaneous fires. There's something called leachate, which is the water which accumulates in landfills. It could um, leach down into the groundwater, which would be very dangerous for everybody. You know, it's very smelly. There's pests. There's methane being created all around. Not, not great. Now, we've made ash. Now, we've made steam. Remember the fire is very hot, it heats up water, heats up uh, that into steam, which runs through a steam turbine generator to make enough electricity to power our trash building, power our recycling building, power our new, our, our two electric cars. Eventually we're gonna get electric trucks, which is gonna be great. COVID definitely put a wrench in that, but it's happening someday. Um, and then we actually sell the rest of the grid uh, to power up to 15,000 homes, minimum of 10,000 homes. So that's no small potatoes, I think. And then finally, the pollution is removed. Uh, we're spraying in urea to take out the nitrogen oxide, spraying in carbon injection to remove the mercury and dioxin furans, spraying in lime slurry to remove the acidic gases, and using that electrostatic precipitator right here to remove the particulates. And do you remember, we're testing everything 24 seven. There's someone in the control room of our building 24 seven, making sure that everything's fine and safe. You know, they're watching the um, pressures and the temperatures and the amounts of every single thing. So it's pretty, pretty uh, great process. This is a little snapshot of what was in our annual report last year, um, just to show you how well we are removing all pollution. So this is the regulated limits of every single thing that we're tracking. 
it's a different number for everything. So that's why we used 100% instead of the specific amounts. But if we look here um, to mercury, just as an example, our limit is 25 pounds per year. So that would be 25 pounds up here, but we're actually way down here at around 35%. And that was um, as of uh, 2020. The good news is, is that as of 2021, which we have not made the graph for yet, uh, we only emitted 8.8 .8 pounds. So that's an incredible, oh, sorry, it's 2.9. So this was 8.8. .8. So we're really, really doing a great job and always improving, which is excellent. Now we, um, this is, has, been, has been an incredible amount of information for everybody, but I just wanna make sure that you know that all this stuff is online as well. So, you know, if I need to know where my uh, recycling can get dropped off, I can go to this waste uh, recycling library, which can be found at ecomain.org um, under municipal services resource library. You can also just search library right here. Um, we also have a lot of great things um, under tours and outreach education. So just know that all of the information here is online. We've got our do don't lists. We've got posters. We can drop some off to you. We can drop some off to your transfer station. Um, you know, if you know people who need these, we've got really great lists, both uh, in the um, list form as well as in the picture form. So there's a lot of really good things going on here. If you ever need to know what to do with that thing in your hand, there's the Recyclopedia. You can type in anything from styrofoam to gum to shoes to cardboard box to, um, you know, whatever you've got, like 1,400 different things in this searchable database. If you happen to type in something that we haven't uh, put in there yet, there's actually a suggest item button, which is fantastic. So then you can help us grow the list. If you're young at heart, then we've got a fun game. It's like a drag and drop game. So just know that there's a lot of fun resources here talks about pay as you throw, where did my batteries go? What are my food waste options? Let's watch some more videos. So anyway, lots of great things on our website. Whew. Now, in summary, following the waste hierarchy, that is reduce, reuse, recycle, and compost, will cut down on the waste that we all create. Again, we can't do everything, but we can all do something. So try and get that trash and remove the, re the reusables. Get that trash, remove the recyclables. Get that trash, remove the food waste. And overall, you will have a much healthier earth, uh, a much more sustainable community. Um, you know, taxes will be lower if everything, everyone did the right thing with their waste. You know, there's there's no downside to uh, to making sure that we're doing the right thing with, with what we're throwing away. You know, it just sometimes takes a little bit extra effort on our, our parts, but it 100% is worth it. So again, uh, here's my personal email. Again, info at ecomain.org is much easier to remember. If you have further questions beyond tonight, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. So check out those social medias if you're uh, inclined, and of course our website too. So with that, I would love to answer any questions. Hi, uh, I I have a was, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I thought that was a very helpful presentation. I appreciate your time and effort. Um, a couple of things. First of all, I have a friend um, who's always concerned with these kinds of issues. And he said something to me a few years ago that I've thought about many times since, which is that there is no away. True. And think of it in terms of you know, oh, just throw it away. There, you know, if you think that there there is no way, um, then you kind of got to think about, okay, what am I going to do with this stuff? Or, you know, should I, you know, avoid getting it in the first place? You know, something to think about. The other question I had was, you know, all the plastic film, which you apparently can bring somewhere to perhaps recycle. Um, it looks like the alternative is to send it to the, uh, trash to energy plant. Um, do you think the stuff actually gets recycled if you bring it to Hannaford or someplace like that? Does it actually get reused or should we just put it in the trash? I can say with 100% certainty, the stuff that you take to Hannaford, um, they have an exclusive contract with Trex, T-R-E-X decking. Some of you might even have that in your front or backyard and you don't yeah. even know it, but that decking material is made out of 95% uh, recycled product, whether it's uh, the film packaging or sawdust, because um, that's the two um, materials that are that make up that stuff. 
Um, so yes, 100% that stuff does get recycled, but again, just like us, you have to give them the right stuff. They don't want chip bags. They don't want, you know, dog poo bags. I actually did see someone once go to put their dog poo bag into a recycling bin. And I'm like, no, no, no. And they're like, but it's plastic. It's like, okay, but one, we don't take plastic bags and two, what's in that plastic bag. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the point is, make sure that you give them the right stuff. And yes, 100% certainty, they will recycle it into something uh, productive. So if cream. you don't want to do that, then the trash is the only other option. Of course, try and reduce and reuse it first. Um, we don't want that stuff in the recycling bin, uh, but you know that could go to the trash. But again, I'd like you to try and reduce, re reuse, and recycle that stuff too. Mm -hmm. I noticed that probably 50% of uh, the trash that we have left after sorting and composting and so forth is basically plastic film. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's always fun to do a trash audit on yourself too. You know, like pick a time where your trash can is really full and then get a tarp or uh, your shower curtain that you can rinse off afterwards, get some gloves and go through it and say, oh, this stuff is trash. This stuff is, could be recycled. This stuff, you know, I could stop using it. This stuff. And so it's really helpful to see what you are making because sometimes we don't even think about it when we're buying stuff, but we do think about it when we see it all spread out on the ground. What about plastic bubble mailers? That can go to uh, Hannaford, Shaw's, Walmart, Target, et cetera. Oh, yeah, okay. definitely recycle those. Wow, good. I have, a, I have a question um, regarding the plastics. Yeah. yeah. What about the, the, it's not really, it doesn't feel plasticky, but the insert in inside a cereal box. That can, that can go to Hannaford, Shaw's, Walmart, Target. Just okay. make sure you okay. empty it out because they don't want yeah. like dust, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and dog food bags. Trash. Two? Trash. Trash. Unfortunately, uh, I actually personally use dog food bags and cat litter bags as my trash cans or my trash bags. So I'm not wasting, uh, you know, I'm not going out to buy trash bags. Um, well, I can't we have to. Yeah, I, I, yeah, to. I, I can't remember <laughs> if you pay as you throw. Um, but it, it's just... Okay. For me, it's, it's a helpful, reusable thing. So instead of just chucking them in the trash empty, I fill my mind with trash and then. Okay. Yeah, okay. Katrina, Katrina, we have a question in the chat. Um, sure. The question is, are you tracking forever chemicals? We are very closely looking at PFAS. Um, that's very, very, very long name. PFAS um, is a short name. Yes, we are looking at that. We're looking at it in the landfill. We're looking at it, what's coming out of the stack. I don't have that knowledge just because I'm not the environmental compliance um, person, but we have two people on staff. Um, one has a PhD, so, you know, she's incredibly smart. Anne Hughes and Mark Maritato are both very focused um, and directed to um, ensure the environmental health and safety of our um, everything we're creating, whether it's the air or the ash. So they're, um, they're on it um, and they're doing studies along with the DEP and the EPA. So I personally don't have that information. I'm happy to try and get you whatever we have. Um, but unfortunately, PFAS just kind of started to get on everyone's radar and kind of started to, to see how bad they were. So I think we're just kind of in the beginning process of understanding how much is where. Uh, so if you'd like me to try and get more information for you, I'm happy to in, uh, email me info at ecomain.org. Um, some more questions in the chat. Uh, craft bubble mailers. Um, I don't know exactly what the, the craft means, but I can tell you for sure that if it's a bubble mailer that's purely plastic, like say Amazon, it's plastic and plastic. That's definitely can go uh, to Hannaford Shaw's, Walmart, Target, et cetera, plasticfilmrecycling.org. But if you happen to have bubble wrap with paper, you know what I mean? Like they're usually yellow. Those are a trash item because we can't take things that are fused together. So it's like, okay, well, is that paper or is that plastic? So that's going to be a trash item. So try not to get those. I know it's hard. You know, you don't have control over what people send you, but you know, you can always control over what you send out. So always pick good um, um, products for that. Um, Carol, Jim, go ahead. Um, batteries. 
So if they are double A, triple A, et cetera, I'm mm-hmm. so sorry. The only place for that is the trash. The good okay. news is they no longer have like super scary stuff in them. They have uh, been kind of re- reprocessed to create a safer product. If it's something that's re- rechargeable, um, check out earth911.com, type in your zip code. Places like Home Depot and Lowe's can take those back in a, a free bin at the front of the store. We 100% don't want any kind of batteries. The rechargeable ones have and will start fires. Feel free to go check out YouTube and type in EcoMain Fire. We recorded it. You know, we record everything, but we we put that out there to say, hey, friends, look what happened. Please don't. <laughs> Cautionary tale. Thank you. Of course. Another question in the chat. Um, recycling books include the hardcover and the softcover spine. Yep. Yep. No problem there. Again, when everything's pulped up, the, the, the no stuff will be skimmed away. And on those books, there's, there's really no, no stuff. I guess that, that doesn't really make sense, but um, I guess I was in my mind, I was thinking like a spiral bound notebook. You could even recycle that without taking everything off because the, the, the spiral bound will be removed in the pulping process. So of course, try and reuse or give away those books, but if they're not give away a bowl donatable, then yes, we'll take both hard and soft uh, books. I'm also curious about how um, how clean things need to be. Like, you know, your pizza box with grease stains on it. Can you put that in the in the recycling? Yeah, great, great question. So I, I talked about the pizza boxes. Mostly um, clean is fine. Some spots absolutely fine. You know, super super greasy. Cut around it. Rip around it. Whatever you do, or just rip off the top and give us that and compost or trash the bottom. But let's talk about like a mayonnaise jar or a peanut butter jar. If you have a dog, let them lick it out. If you don't, a fork, spoon, or spatula, get out as much as you're able to. But at no point do we want you to scrub it, wash it, put it in your dishwasher, etc. Because there obviously is a fine line between wasting your water and your time and your effort and the, the effort it takes to recycle it. So get it as empty as you're able to. We do not need you to scrub or clean anything, but things that you give us must be empty. Does that make sense? So don't give us like an inch of your peanut butter or your moldy spaghetti sauce, get that out, but there's some residue, that's okay. Um, Another question in the chat, Rubbermaid storage bins. I'm only assuming they're cracked because otherwise those are gold. (laughs) Make sure that if it's just something you don't want anymore, give it away. Uh, Join a buy nothing group, uh, which are fantastic. Um, Or of course, Goodwill. If they happen to be cracked or broken, yeah, those are fine to put in the recycling bin. Um, I got a call or uh, um, an email from (laughs) South Portland Public Works today asking about like the tops of their recycling bins. And those are fine to, to recycle too. So I know I said containers. Uh, Rubbermaid, you know, those storage bins are technically a container, even if they are broken, that is good plastic. So, you know, that, that's, that's fine. Absolutely. But again, if it's good, it's still good. Even if it just needs a little duct tape, keep using it or give it away. And um, this is actually a question I had as well, but it's also in the chat. Um, the question is, aer- aerosol cans are explosive are, and are they trash? They are not trash. No. So if you are not going to empty them, say it's hairspray and it's a full container of hairspray. No, we don't want that. But if you have an empty spray paint can, an empty hairspray can, an empty food, uh, you know, I don't know, olive oil or Pam or whatever that cooking spray is that I've never used, but I'm sure it's fine. You know, those empty items are great. Propane tanks are no full aerosol cans are no. Um, you'd have to put those in the trash, unfortunately. So um, that's that's also, we need those empty. But um, yeah, those are safe, sorry. Okay, another question in the chat. <laughs> we might be here all night. Uh, do plastics actually have to have a number embossed on them to be recycled? Yes. The, the, that's the short answer. You know, there are plastics out there that that I will look at and say, that's definitely recyclable, that's definitely recyclable, but it does, just doesn't have a number on it. Um, like for example, my daughter calls this a shovel, but it's part of the, the, the broom. I would put this in the recycling bin if it was cracked because it's, I know it's number two, it's good quality plastic. So actually it does have a recycling 
symbol right here, but it does not have a number inside of it. So that is still a recyclable item. Even if it doesn't have the, the number, the symbol is enough. Or if you look at it and say, oh, this looks exactly like my milk jug. It looks exactly like my raspberry container and it doesn't happen to have a number on it, you might just be missing it because some are just so stinking tiny uh, that you might miss it. But overall, yes, it needs that, but really use your common sense. Your plastic fork is never going to be recyclable. Even if you want it to have that number of symbol on it, it's just, you know, so there's things that are and things that are not. Um, so if you ever have a question, you can look it up on the Recyclopedia. You can give me a call and email. Um, uh, yeah, there's, there's a fine line, but overall, yes, it needs that, but. Katrina, this has been super informative. Thank Good. you so much. Um, I'd like to leave everyone with a, a fun little story. This morning I was on my way to work and um, I ended up behind the, um, the garbage truck that was in my neighborhood and it was stopped to uh, get out onto the road and there were quite a number of cars coming out so we waited for a little while and I was sitting there and I happened to uh, look at the guy who was attached to the side of the truck, you know, rather precariously and mm -hmm. Uh, he caught my eye and he gave me the biggest smile and wave as he's holding on to the side of the truck and it made my day and it carried me through my whole my whole day. <laughs> I don't know who he was, but he gave me a smile and a wave and it it set my day. That's great. Yeah, those, yeah. those guys are so great. And to to give some perspective on what they do, trash or waste management, as a whole is the sixth most dangerous job in the US or maybe the world, probably not the world, honestly, because there's like mining and everything. But so please give those guys space and patience. I know we all want to get to work and we all want to get to where we want to go when those guys on the road is just really annoying. Um, but you know, always, always be cautious around them because they might be crossing the road to get a bin, you know, just give them space and patience because they are working real hard for everybody. Excellent. Thank you, Katrina. This was yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Check our social media, check our Facebook, our, uh, our website. But thank you so much for joining us. Have a beautiful night.